when you first put a CD into your computer and you can click on this PC right here over here in this menu that you have you should it should say this PC this will work on Windows and uh, Macs when you first put in the Kimberbell CD you'll see it right here just double click it and it has a folder of the files currently on the disk and you double click that and then you'll see all of this come up. Your embroidery machine, depending on the brand, has a certain file type that it will use. So if you have a brother or a baby lock, it will use a PES file format. If you have a Janome, it will use a Jeff. There, a Bernina uses a different one. You need to read the manual for your machine and figure out what type of file extension it uses. On every disk, you will have each file type. If your embroidery machine doesn't use this, don't worry about those. You need to worry about the one that is for your machine. I am working on the Brother Luminaire, so it uses the PES file type. Right here, this says SVG files for electronic cutting. I'm going to use those too because I have a Brother Scan and Cut and I want to send these files to the scan and cut so that I can cut out the shapes that I need. And that way I don't have to trim while it's in the embroidery hoop. If you don't have a cutting machine, that's okay. You can trim while it's in the embroidery hoop. So for right now, I'm going to open up the PES file folder. And here are all of the designs that are in here. Now, I can see the design in here because I have another piece of software on my machine from Imbrilliance that's called Thumbnailer, and it allows me to see the designs. So if they're really tiny and you really can't tell which one it is and you're not real sure, come up here to View and click, and click Extra Large Icons. And now I can really see all of them and I want to make the crazy patch heart there are a couple of different ways you can get this to your embroidery machine the first way you can do it is to put a USB stick into your computer and grab this and drag it over to the USB stick now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open in brilliance I'm gonna open in brilliance and up here at the top, this will send it down to where you can't see it, and this will make it smaller, and then this will close it. So I want to make it smaller, and I'm going to grab this design, the heart mug rug, and I'm going to drag it right here. You see the little plus sign? And let go. And there it is. I'm going to make it bigger. I want to make sure that I'm in a 5 by 7 hoop. So in Imbrilliance, I'm going to go to Edit preferences oh I'm in the 9 by 14 I need to be in the 130 by 180 hoop let's see there it is right there and it'll tell you sewing field 5 by 7 I'm gonna click apply and click OK there now it's in the right hoop I'm gonna make this a little bigger and I can see how that's gonna look very nice. So I want to get this to the Brother Luminaire. And Brilliance added a very cool feature. You can come up here to Utility, and it says Send to Solaris slash XP1. The XP1 is the model number for the Brother Luminaire. So I'm going to click that. It says Design Name, and I'm going to change it to Heart Mug Rug. Very good, and click OK. Wait a second, and it says File Sent to Machine, and I'm going to click OK. If you do not have a Brother Luminaire, you can also, in Imbrilliance, go File, and you can say Save As, Stitch and Working, and it'll want to know where do you save this. And what I normally do is I will click on here and find the USB drive. If I had one in, installed, it would it would pop up in this window, and I could save it right here, 
you save it to a USB stick and then you take the USB stick to your embroidery machine. I'm going to click cancel because I've already sent it. Also on the CD are the instructions and that is a PDF file that is right here. It'll say Adobe Acrobat document. That's a PDF file. Double click it and open it up. You can tell I was in here. Here are all the instructions that you need to make your mug rug. And it talks about using SVG files if you want to use your electronic cutting machine. And they have the basic instructions for every single one of them up in the front part. Each individual mug rug will have its own separate page. So this is the basic instructions of what to do for every one of them and how they will work. What I want to do is I want to print out these instructions so I can take them over to the embroidery machine and I know what to do. Page one through six are the basic instructions for every single mug rug. So now I want to get to the mug rug I want to make, which is the crazy patch heart mug rug. That's on page eight. So I am going to print page one through six and eight. You don't have to print out the whole thing, all 18 pages. I'm going to go file and print. And I'm going to show you a cool trick. When you come up with your printer menu here, you can click through down here on this arrow. You can click through and see all the pages you want to print. You can print all pages. You can print the current page, and that's the page you see right here, or you can only print certain pages. So I want to print pages. Let's see. I don't need page one because I know how all that works. I'm going to print pages two through six, comma, space, eight. All right, and I'm going to scroll it down till I can see my print button, and I'm going to click print, and there it goes. Save myself a little ink. While we're here on this page, I want you to take a look at, this is the order that these pieces are going to be sewn down. And you can tell here you need a total of five pieces for in the heart, and you're also going to need another piece for this background right here all right this little tiny white swiss dot looking background let's take a look at the mug rug itself they use a large print right here that's a contrasting print they have a solid background color there's a very small darker outer red heart the little swiss dot and then they have very small prints in here so we have a medium fabric a little bit darker, another medium, a light fabric, and a dark fabric. So because I have no imagination and the people at Kimberbell get paid to make these things look cute, I'm going to do what they do and I'm going to choose fabrics that are a lot like this. So I want piece number five to be dark. I want three medium fabrics. I want a light color fabric here and I want a dark outer fabric to match with the red thread for a red heart. And then I'm also going to choose a little bit larger print. So that's important if you're doing this for the SVG files, if you're going to upload them to the Brother Canvas in order to be able to have them cut out for you or to your, uh, your cutting machine's online program that, is, that they use for cutting these things. So I can see one is up here in the top left-hand corner. Two is the light contrasting fabric, three and four are medium fabrics, and five is the darker fabric. Now the next thing I need to do is get those cutting files to my electronic cutting machine. So I am going to add mine to the Brother Canvas workspace. And when you open up these, here are all the cut files. And this is just so I don't have to trim while I'm in the hoop. If you don't have a cutting machine, you can trim the fabric inside the hoop. If you have a cutting machine, it's great. Even if you have a Cricut or you have a Silhouette, you can take these and save them to a USB stick. And then in the same method, you just grab a hold of it and you drag it over to wherever the USB is on, on your computer and drop it in there. 
I want to send the file electronically to my scan and cut so I am going to navigate out to on the internet the brother canvas workspace and I've already signed in and this is my account so to do this I'm going to click at the SVG button and, it, and the, the tool tip comes up and it says import SVG so I'm going to click that and it says well where do you want to get it from I need to choose a file and there it is now if if your computer comes up when it says choose a file and it comes up like this then you have to go through the whole process again to navigate to where you, those files are oh, there they are right there and i'm going to click crazy patch heart mug rug and click open and there it is and i'm going to make sure that the right one is is been selected and i'm going to click ok all right, I got to notice some shapes could not be converted and there's an error. Okay, ignore that. I don't know. It does it all the time and that's a bug or something. I'm not real sure, but I'm just going to click OK. There are the shapes that I need that I want my machine to cut. Now that I have all of this in the Brother Canvas, I'm going to move this away just a little bit so I've got room for my fabric to be cut. Now remember on the instruction piece we had, this is piece number one. I'm gonna pull it over here. I wanna give my pieces some room to be able for me to put a, a square of fabric right here for it to cut out. This is piece number two. I'm gonna put this here, put this here. Piece number three, piece number four, and piece number five. That way I can kind of remember how all of these go and every shape is different so we will know what it is that it what we're looking at based on the color of the fabric and the the actual shape itself so I want to get this now down to my cutting machine I have turned on the, the brother scan and cut I'm gonna click download and it wants to know how I want to download do I want to save it to my computer or do I want to save it to my machine I want to save it to my machine so I'm just gonna click this button and all done you can tell it went from the cloud down to your machine so I'm gonna click close all done with that that's great okay so we have taken care of the design files we've got those over to our machine uh, we have looked at the instructions and printed out the ones that we need and we have taken care of the cutting files if you are going to use those so now let's go to the scan and cut and cut out our fabric pieces once you turn on your scan and cut this is the scan and cut DX225 so I need to retrieve the data I'm gonna touch this button and it wants to know where you want to get it from from inside the machine from the internet the cloud from a USB stick or do you, maybe you have a cable running to your computer I want to get it from the cloud there's my design right there there's uh, the little heart pieces and the background heart so you need to figure out how how big do your fabric pieces need to be for this well I know that this I go I use if if a design touches a little tiny part of a square then I count that square as an inch so I need one two three four let's say five and I need one two three four five so a five by five square for this particular piece the scan and cut DX has an arrow on the top of the 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 mat and it matters which way you put that in so here's the piece I'm going to use for my the background of my heart now we're not inverting these with iron-on so they can go on fabric side up they don't need any kind of heat and bond or anything I have a fabric support sheet on there okay so number one was kind of a darker it was one of the medium fabrics remember I needed a dark a light and three mediums so piece number one and the nice thing about having the scan and cut is I don't really have to know exactly where everything needs to go right now so I know it's kind of hard to see because of the distance but I do want to show you so piece number one is kind of right about here just below where the hearts gonna cut so I'm gonna put a little piece right here for number one 
Number two was the lighter piece, so I, that goes right down here. Put that on there. Number five was my darker piece. I'm going to put that right here. And three and four we'll put like this. Maybe this will be number four. And this will be number three. Okay. Now, I don't know if that's exactly where it's going to cut, but that's really not that big of a deal. So this is what my mat looks like, and I'm getting ready to cut all these out. So you want to push them down pretty good so they don't scoot around when you're not looking. There is a button right there that wants you to, wants to scan, and that what that does, it looks like a looks like your mat and it has a little bar across it. So we're going to press that, and it says scan the mat and show as background. Put material to scan on the mat and set it in the machine, and press the start key to scan. All right, and we're going to hit start. All right, now we can see exactly where everything needs to be. I'm going to move this heart a little bit more in the middle. I'm going to take this and put it up here. I'm just going to move these so they're in the center of these two and a half inch squares that I cut. And I'm going to put them exactly where they need to go. There. So I've got all of the little pieces exactly on the color fabric. I can see. I'm going to tell it OK and it says select and I want to cut and start the DX has an auto sensor to be able to figure out exactly the depth that it needs to do cutting all those little bumps on that heart. I do not want to do that in the hoop. All done. Yay! Okay, I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm going to eject my mat. Let's get our shapes. Perfect. Be very careful about stretching the fabric. As you pull it off. If you get a little fraying around the edges when you pull it off, don't worry about that because the satin stitch of the embroidery machine will cover that up. The instructions say I need cutaway stabilizer. So, how do I know cutaway from tearaway? Well, cutaway, you can try to tear it and it it really gives you it's resistant okay tear away feels more like paper and it tears very easy okay so how do I measure that well I don't get all wrapped up into you know exact meet the requirement I just make sure that I have enough that I kinda of put my embroidery hoop because I'm right-handed I put my embroidery hoop backwards and I make sure that the entire field is covered with maybe an extra inch half inch all the way around whatever no big deal and I just make a cut and that's how I measure my stabilizer very simple 